Ever since the wooting dropped, it's been all the craze with Rapid Tricker quickly becoming the standard for pro players and sweaty gamers. But every time I go to buy one, it's on pre-order, out of stock, and then I'm reminded that it's made out of plastic, has wobbly switches, and it sounds like this. Oh well, yeah, so Saturn. What do I do? Well, ever since Wooting, a bunch of other companies have dropped Hall Effect boards left, right, and center, like Mellatrix, but the Bouge is $230, close to $300 with shipping, and it's also out of stock at this time. Drunk Deer is at $180 for the bare bone kit, no switches, and the SteelSeries Apex Pro, well, you know. But what if I told you that one of the best Hall Effect Rapid Trigger boards was currently in stock, $100 cheaper, and made out of metal? And it sounds like this? Hello everyone, Saturn here, and I bought the Polar 65 by Arbiter Studios, and so should you. In this video, I'm looking at the best budget Hall Effect board that you can buy today. Now, before this video starts, I want to let you guys know that I bought this board on my own and then Arbiter reached out to me and sent me the Neo Turkey version for testing. That being said, they did not influence this review, they can't tell me what to say, and all thoughts and opinions in this video are completely my own. So going on to the Arbiter Studios website, they only have one product for sale and that is the Polar 65, but they do have a few changes to it. So the original Polar 65 comes with Fuji Hall Effect switches, which is at 36 grams for actuation, uh, 0 0.1 millimeters to 3.8, and it's continuous wrapper trigger. They have a bunch of different colors here. These remind me of the like, Yuki Aim colors. They have a blue. Um, they have the casing being a silver and a black. Uh, they have the Jedi green, which I think looks amazing. And then they have this Mint Abyss, which also looks cool. One of my personal favorites, the Midnight Lilac, but they also have a silver variant of it as well. Now they do have two limited boards, uh, one of the best ones being the Yuki Aim board, uh, which the switch is 30 grams instead of 36, um, and the bottom out is 50 instead of 60. And then they do have the new Neo Tokyo, which they sent out to me, um, and these use different switches as well. Well, these are the dual rail editions, um, and basically that gives you a smoother actuation, less wobble, and a crispier, smoother sound. Um, but they are the same force as the original board. So going on to the actual specs here, they are using a die sub PBT keycaps, but the actual sides around it are clear. So the RGB shines through a bit more, but on the original um, Polar, it is just the PBT keycaps. They are using the dual Fuji switches in the Neo Tokyo and the other ones are just using the regular Fuji switches. They're still really, really good. They're obviously just have a little bit more wobble. The dead zone's not as great. Um, and they definitely don't sound as nice, and we'll do a sound test between them in just a second. You do get that aluminum frame, which is very, very nice, and same thing with the switch plate. And then underneath that, um, you know, squishing the PCB together, you do get two very, very, very thick pieces of silicon that dampens the sound and makes it sound so good, um, as well as that translucent case at the bottom. So on their website, you will also find the web app, which you can set per key actuations, which is really cool. So let's say you're gaming and you don't accidentally want to hit your Windows key. We all know how that annoying that is. You guys can turn that all the way down and it won't activate as easy as all the other keys that have rapid trigger. Um, on the top as well, you guys have different profiles. So you get, you know, you guys can add these by the way. Personally, you know, you can have a gaming one, one for maybe Osu where it's just the, uh, the tap keys. And you can have one for work where you have pretty much no rapid trigger and, you know, very hard actuations. So you can have, a, you know, that push down feeling so you can type a bit better. Same thing going on over here. You have the RGB, which you can also set per profile. Um, so you can have different colors for different things. Um, and as you guys can see here, there's random ripples. Um, and I mean, you're not gonna see it on the screen here, but it will change on your board, but you can also change uh, the brightness of it going, actually, I think nine color levels is a lot. Um, it really, really dims out at one, becoming pretty much not noticeable, and then nine being extremely bright. And you guys can also choose pretty much any color you want through the web app. Um, using the actual board itself to do this, you won't be able to pick the exact color that you want, but using the web app, you can get really, really specific with it. 
So inside the box, you guys do get a user's manual that will help you figure out through stuff. There are seven specific uh, default RGB colors and 16 effects. By FN Enter, you guys can change those. So for example, you can see the purple light up there. Um, you guys can see that rainbow effect. There's 16 different ones, so quite a bit to go through. Um, and there's plenty of different options, so you can change the speed, the brightness, etc. If you guys do find a solid color one that y'all like, though, y'all can click F and Shift to change those colors. So let me find one here. Here's the white version of it. You can click F and Shift, and you can toggle between the colors. Now, if you are looking to change your actuation, you can click FN and then Tab. Your whole keyboard will go purple, and then you can either click Page Down, and everything will dim out or page up and everything will brighten and that changes the actuation. Obviously, the brighter being the lower actuation and the darker um, being that really heavy actuation pretty much bottoming out to having to click the key. Now you guys can also do per key by clicking this tilde here. And then if you guys, for example, let's say you don't want the Windows key to be that sensitive, you guys can click the Windows key and it'll light up red. And you can also use page down to dim it out and make it all the way at the bottom so you don't accidentally click it. Or for example, if you're a psycho and you do like clicking the Windows key repeatedly for no reason, you guys can page up it and make it bright red so it activates like all the other switches as well. And then you just click tab and then FN again and the keyboard will go back to its state and you guys can go back to playing with the RGB modes and switching between things as well. Now, the unboxing experience for both boards are pretty much identical here, except that the actual box itself, uh, the color changes. Obviously, on the Neo Tokyo, you get this really cool um, color wave to it. You get the polar, it got this little glitch effect. Same thing on the logo on the back, sort of like a little uh, neon glitch effect going on. But the actual unboxing experience is the same on both. So you'll open it up, you'll have this one inside of the Neo Tokyo, and then you have your board inside wrapped in plastic. Um, you do get a user's manual, and then you'll get a spare set of custom keycaps and a USB-C cable, so you can plug in your keyboard as well. Now, I think this one does have the plastic on it still, so let's pop open this one, and you guys can see that. Yep, it comes like this inside a little plastic slip bag, and everything else pretty much stays the same, except the actual box color itself. So I did pop on the extra keycaps here so you guys can see what that looks like. And it does come with the four arrow keys, a space bar, the enter key, and then you do get this uh, wolf little fox logo looking thing that I personally like putting on escape. You guys can use it for pretty much anything. Um, now, you also do get a keycap puller and a switch puller because this board is hot swappable. Um, and to use these, you just pop it on like this, you turn it a little bit so it kind of locks on, and you guys kind of just pull up from there. And you can let them go. And if you guys are trying to remove a lot of switches, you guys can usually remove up to three at a time with no problem. Now, onto actually removing the switches themselves. Um, it is a little bit harder and a little bit trickier, but you guys are going to be using these little grooves here on the side to make it a lot easier. What you're going to do is either lock into the top or bottom, and you guys will kind of feel when that locks in. You guys are going to use those grooves that I just showed you, and you guys are going to pull up. And that is how you will get the switches out. And after you guys get used to it, it does not take very long, just a little bit of patience and time to make sure you do not mess up the board. And here you have your gator on switches now the ones on the neo tokyo are dual rail these are not and we will do a sound test between those real quick but um that is how you pull out the switches So as you guys can tell from the sound test there, the original Polar 65 is a bit poppier. It's a little bit snappier. Um, it's still very quiet compared to some of the Still Series boards. Um, I am amping the sound, by the way, so you guys can hear it a bit more. Um, but it is a bit more reactive, a bit snappier, a bit poppier. Um, and then the Neo Tokyo, even though they have the same actuation, 
Um, it does feel more controlled and more smooth, like every keystroke is deliberate instead of something reactive and poppy. So it gives you two completely, you know, different feelings here whenever you're using these boards. Um, the only downside that I have with this is that the space bars on both of them are still very, very, very clacky compared to doing something like a custom board. So hopefully in the future, they'll be able to add something um, to make the space bars sound a bit better. All things considered, the Polar 65 is truly unmatched on the market, being cheaper than all the major brands while not sacrificing on quality and performance. So if you guys are interested, I'll leave a link in the description and pinned comment so you can get one for yourself before the sale ends. And don't forget to use code SATURN for $15 off your purchase. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch y'all in the next one.